Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. It's been a while since I did an early access game. Most of the time I didn't feel interested as they're usually incomplete buggy messes and they can't be properly reviewed as they're usually not what you would call feature complete. However, that's what my state of the game series is for and with this title I felt compelled to revitalize an old system with Everspace. <laughs> Sorry for that little trailer there, guys. I just couldn't help it. Thanks to recent innovations in games like Eve Valkyrie, Elite Dangerous, and Star Citizen, it seems that over a decade since the Space Centronic games were popular, they're starting to come back in a big way. Now, with these recent titles, and including some new ones on the way from the Warhammer 40k franchise as well as others, the space genre is starting to feel common again, and I, for one, think that's fucking fantastic. I'm a huge fan of anything where I get to pilot a ship and dogfight in space. Now, Everspace continues on that favorite pastime of mine in an external view roguelite style experience. Now, with what appears to also include some elements from games like FTL, where you move through a sector and you have your choice of paths, which is a pretty good idea for the style game and one that was implemented very well here. Now, first off, the game looks great. Even for an early access title and one that's sub $50 for the asking price, it's got good polish already. Running at a steady 60 FPS, I haven't really noticed any frame rate drops or any real bugs of any kind. The gameplay and graphics are smooth and well done, and I really couldn't find anything to complain about, and I was looking. I was. However, bear in mind that the gameplay is always where it's at and how well the game balances difficulty and enjoyment. Roguelites in general tend to have a uh, tend to walk a fine line between success and psychosis inducing frustration, as the game will actively try to kill you as part of the overall mechanic. Now, in between runs, the in-game currency you earn will give you the ability to unlock perks or improvements for your ship before you try your luck and skills again. Actually, let's switch over so we can take a look at that system now. So this is the perk system, and uh, as you can see, there's actually a decent amount of uh, upgrades and resources that you can purchase before you go on your next run. We have the weapon uh, primaries, weapon slots, where you increase the total amount of weapons you can have on your ship at any one time. Secondary weapon slots, critical hit damage, critical hit chance. We have engine upgrades, which give you max boost speed and boost maximum speed and boost speed, sensor, sector scanner, sensor range, hull hit points, shield generator, we have shield capacity, shield shutdown rate, shield recharge rate, energy capacity, energy regeneration, the number of device slots, additional device slots, consumable slots, crafting costs, mining yield, credit loot bonus, rare loot chance, nanobody efficiency, hit point repair rate, component damage repair costs, component damage chance. Now we also have fuel capacity, lucky jump chance, jump charge time, and we have retrieval, store credits, and bonus equipment, or the things that you can purchase down here with the in-game currency. We also have the stats over here where you can tell challenge, current challenges, game stats, uh, which my stats are pretty damn horrible, ship stats, blueprints, where you get to see what devices you've uh, uncovered and everything like that. As you can see, I haven't played too much through this game, only a couple hours so far. And then the Codex, which is apparently coming soon. 
And here we have the in-game crafting screen in your main interface screen. We have the pulse laser, gatling, and beam laser, which are the three weapons I have right now. There's a beam, beam laser with an energy consumption mod upgrade installed, which is the little plus symbol there. And my secondary weapon is a light missile. Now we have plain shield scanning probe, combat drone, and energy boost for my consumables and other devices. Notice you have credits and fuel down here. Fuel is what you use for when you jump from system to system. We also have nanobots, which are used to repair your ship. Uh, currently, I do I oh I do have a little bit of damage. So we'll use one hull. We'll use one on a bot to repair my hull. You can either take damage to the individual components of your system, and you can see what a repair cost would require. Power cells for the primary weapons. Uh, shield generator requires crystals. Engine requires co uh, power cells. Secondary weapons require processors. Uh, processor also for sensors as well as plasma, and scrap, nanobots. Uh, life support system uses compound whatever the heck that is. And inertia dampers, if they get damaged, requires a processor and plasma for the main for the main components there. And all of them require scrap and nanobots as well. And your hull just requires nanobots. Now we do have a star map here. I just uh, opened up to the first area so you can see. Now we do have our current inventory down here at the bottom as well. Nanobots, scrap, gel, crystal, gas, and ore. We also have down here compound, power cell processor, plasma, dark matter, dark energy, and access keys. Those are all used for crafting and for doing various things. Now, of course, you do have the three different choices here in this map, which this uh, middle one will branch out to two different choices. The outside ones are a bit more limited in the path you can choose until you can jump onto the next system. Now, each sector you go to, you will be confronted with a similar map where you have different choices and things of that nature. Now in the equipment, back to the equipment, we actually do have the options to upgrade, which if you have all, I'm short plasma, so I can't create an, a shield mod upgrade for this gun yet. Uh, and this, all this is in your instance. Once you die, th that run is complete and all of these up mods and everything like that go away. Uh, this is all gathered for the purpose of this particular run. So you can build new for the missiles and things like that, and items with upgrades. You can unlock, like I said, you can unlock additional mods and everything for your equipment to improve its efficiency and its efficacy. But that's no, oh, I'm actually apparently full up there for damage limiters. All right. Uh, so things like that, and so it's 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 pretty interesting. It's a pretty interesting system, and like I was I was comparing it a little to FTL earlier, and uh, I know FTL was an exceptionally addictive video game, and this one is kind of going along the same vein. Uh, it's one of those games where I can I can easily see myself sinking a a crazy amount of time into. So aside from the roguelite mechanics, the game's flight controls with a keyboard and mouse felt very smooth and intuitive, if a bit arcade-ish. Using simple WASD keys for movement along with shift for booster, now this actually brings up the power management, uh, the booster, while I mention it. So it's it's not in your face or overly complicated, but was still something to be aware of. You have a running bar of energy that is on the bottom half of your target reticle that indicates remaining power. That total level gets decreased whenever you use boosters or your weapons, and if you run out, you end up having to wait for some time for it to recharge. Now, the recharge times aren't overly long, but it's something to be aware of, as I ran out of energy a lot when I was dogfighting, probably because I'm terrible. But also, it's one of those things you can improve upon with perk upgrades and other things, and it's definitely something to re keep in the back of your mind as you're playing the game. Now, there is one thing in, with this game is that it lacks the ability to rebind any keys, which, while the controls are fairly basic, rebindable keys should be a thing. So, but as I said at the beginning, this game is not what we can call feature complete right now. It is in early access and being actively worked on. So take everything I've said here with a grain of salt. And that's the issue really doing any form of review on an early access title is that the game is subject to change. And two weeks from now, this information could be completely irrelevant. 
Uh, so at its current playable state, though, there is only one ship to fly, and although they tend on increasing that to three, and the story mode isn't in the current version of the game either. However, there is voice acting in the game between your character and the ship's computer, so I'm expecting some voice acting to be make it into the story mode as well. However, I could be horribly mistaken about that as well. We'll we'll wait and find out. But if they keep going like they have been, then I can easily see this game wor being worth every penny of the thirty dollar asking price and then some. Everspace by Rockfish Games is definitely a game to keep your eyes on, and when its full version is released, I expect if you're a fan of dogfighting and roguelites, then this game will quickly become a must-own. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I don't forget to let me know your thoughts on your experiences with the game down in the comments. Hell, once it's released, maybe we'll even do a full review on it. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you next time. Hi there boys and girls, thanks for checking my video out. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit that like button and maybe even that subscribe button, trust me, it works really good. Don't forget to share with your friends and if you're interested in following me on Twitter and Facebook, the links for that are in the description down below. I also have a Patreon if you're interested in helping to support the growth of my channel and the link for that is down below as well. And once again, thanks for watching and supporting my channel guys, I really appreciate it.